Good day everybody. My name is Arun Sundaraj. I am the Director of Culinary Operations at Taj Mahal, New Delhi. It's been uh, seven years for me here at the Taj Mahal and uh, I can tell you this much, it's never been a dull moment. Uh, it's been so much activity past three, four years, which has been you know, getting ready for renovation, renovation. And during all this, you know, we, we managed to serve uh, heads of state, we've managed to serve uh, CEOs, uh, big delegations, uh, large conferences. Our guests who are regulars, who keep coming back to us, and uh, we are blessed to be in this space, actually. When we talk about reimagining a classic, it's primarily looking at, uh, you know, connoisseurs of wine who say that a great wine is normally something that, we, that you know, that requires some amount of aeration before we actually drink it. So what we've done at the Taj Mahal is that we've got great wines, or we've got great products, or we've got great brands, and we've given them a you know, breath of fresh air. So we've relaunched the Machan, which is a classic. We've relaunched uh, the Chambers, which is an icon by itself. And we've done the Emperor's Lounge. We've also you know, redone the House of Ming. And each and every one of them have been classics, but they have been bought back with a reimagined avatar of its own. So Machan is at version 3, Emperor's Lounge is at version 3, House of Ming is at version 2. But what we've really found very exciting about this is the way we've been able to keep a lot of the essence of the past and try to make them as contemporary and, you know, and get them more future ready. So the entire experience, the entire journey of this uh, reinvention or this reimagination and the way it really goes is a lot of stress, a lot of pressure because uh, there is a lot of expectation by the guests who have been frequenting these restaurants. And when you look at these restaurants, we're actually talking about people who have grown up here, three generations, they actually come to you and say, oh, you know, I came here with my, with my wife for the first time and I proposed here and there is so much connect, you know, there's so much nostalgia with, with each of these restaurants. So when we try to get this right, we need to be able to keep the true essence of the restaurant uh, make sure it is contemporary for today and we're supposed to then carry it on and you know bring in a lot more fun elements, things which are trending at the same time trying to capture everything together. We actually built a imperial dining experience which is new. We've got a tree trolley experience which is new. We've got cocktails which are uh, which trend, which are trending so we've got various elements to make sure that the guest says goes back with an experience goes back with a memory and says wow i went a house of ming and i'm like ecstatic so when you talk about the taj mahal hotel in new delhi and you talk about the chambers uh, the the entire fun of putting that together in terms of just a cocktail so we've got uh, a cocktail which is made out of blue label, which is paired with uh, truffle. And that itself is uh, where you get two super expensive ingredients together. And that's how we've got a Chambers 21 cocktail. So that's one part of you know how uh, we actually reimagine and the way we get it right. Uh, when you also talk about the way the Chambers is being laid out and the way it is, Today that kitchen has got an amazing view, so we actually invite guests to come in and do their parties in our kitchen. So you know, it's it's like you have a certain amount of snacks that is rolling out in a, one of our banquet halls and then the guest is amazed and he asks us, where's the main course? And he says, no, you need to come into the kitchen. And so you actually walk into the kitchen, you are you're standing in the kitchen, my chefs are actually plating, you see all that. So there's a new experience that is created for the guest and he's like, wow, I can actually pick up what I want. So when you actually talk about, you know, trying to retain the classics, so you're trying to keep the, the, the stars of what we what you'd call in, uh, in a restaurant, uh, let's talk about Machan. So, you know, there's a great story of somebody called as, uh, you know, drinking Kona coffee and, uh, you know, remembering or they've got experiences or memories of what they've had. So now we need to get the Kona coffee back and there is a lot of history behind it. Somebody said it was, it was made in one Kona, it was made in a corner, so that's why it was called Kona coffee. The other one says, no, no, you know, it was a type of, of bean that was brewed or... And uh, so we need to now get this back and then finally when we actually went and did some more research, we realized it was a, a pour-over coffee. 
So you just spoke coffee. So we said, let's let's make this a lot more fun, and uh, you know, we create that experience. So, so we've actually got a little pot which actually does uh, a pour over coffee for you on the table. And uh, if you guys come to Machan in the night, and uh, if you spend 500 rupees, you can have the same coffee for five rupees. So that sort of nostalgia. People go back. They say, "Wow, I got coffee." F you know, when I came here with my girlfriend the first time for five for five rupees, and I sat for five hours. So you can do the same thing today as well. But it's with a twist. Creating an experience or creating a memory that actually tells you, wow, I think this is where we guys need to be and this is the space that you need to be in.